Greetings for the day. Today we will discuss the foundation concept and a prominent topic of the AML CFT framework, AML business risk assessment and how to conduct a business risk assessment. It is difficult to mitigate and manage the risk of money laundering and terrorism financing unless you understand how vulnerable your business is to these financial crimes. Accordingly, to have the most robust AML controls and safeguard your organization, you need to conduct AML business risk assessment and understand the MLFT risks your business is exposed to. AML business risk assessment should be conducted with the utmost diligence, adopting a risk-based approach to ensure that adequate resources are deployed optimally to mitigate the risk. This should be aligned with the nature and size of the business. Moreover, before performing the business risk assessment, the company should document its MLFT risk appetite. That is, to what all MLFT risks and the extent to which the company can tolerate the same without impacting the business. As the first step to AML business risk assessment, the organization should evaluate the business and the possible risk scenarios from the following perspective. 1. Customer. Nature of customer base, legal structure, customer's nature of business, customer's net worth, etc. 2. Geography. Targeted market, place of business operations. 3. Product or services or transactions. Nature of products and services offered, their association with MLFT typologies, transactional information like value, payment method, etc. 4. Delivery channel. The involvement of third parties, intermediaries, etc. Once the business risk scenarios from MLFT perspective have been identified, it becomes pertinent to evaluate the possibility of each of these risk factors and the likely impact it can have on the business in case such risk materializes. The likelihood of occurrence is determined based on the previous year's factual data, the frequency of each risk parameter. That is, if a particular risk indicator was observed multiple times, more than 8 to 10 times, during the last year, you might categorize such risk as having a high possibility of occurrence. The combination of the two, chances of risk materializing and its impact on the business, is known as the inherent MLFT risk to the business. A comparison of the inherent risk is made with the strength and effectiveness of the controls, if already deployed, to determine whether there is any residual risk to the company that existing controls cannot mitigate. Further, it is pertinent to understand whether such net risk, which is beyond the managing capacity of the present controls, is within the company's MLFT risk appetite. Suppose any risk parameters analysis suggests that the impact of such risk would not be managed effectively with the current level of control and is beyond the company's risk appetite. In that case, the company shall efficiently identify and deploy additional measures to mitigate such risk. The entire business risk assessment exercise assists the DNFBPs, VASPs, and financial institutions in defining their AML-CFT controls that are strong and effective enough to combat MLFT and protect the company from being a conduit to financial crime activities. I trust this brief understanding of AML business risk assessment will be helpful to you. Thank you. Stay tuned for more such sessions.